Now, everything old is new again. America's entertainment pop culture talk show with Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. Hey, welcome to Everything Old is New Again. My name is David Cohen, and uh, Douglas Viviani, the host of the show, is not here this week. He is actually at the Eternal Convention on Long Island. He's uh, actually doing a panel there, um, and it's about pop culture. What else would it be about? So Douglas sends his regards, um, but even with that, he is still not letting me host the show. I am still, you know, the guy in the background, the guy sitting on the chair next to the big desk, but he's turned the reins over to a very special host, uh, a good friend of ours from way back. Uh, we know him as Barbecue Guy, and today he's going to take the reins of the show, and basically, uh, with it being summer and school being out and barbecues being a favorite pastime of everyone out there, uh, he's going to take over and give us some great recipes and just talk about what barbecue means to him. Now, just to let you know, Barbecue Guy is very passionate about what he does. He's a little excitable, but let me turn it over to him, ladies and gentlemen, the fun-loving Barbecue Guy. Welcome. Thank you, thank you. I don't know who uh, said I was fun-loving and lovable, but uh, when it comes to food, I'm, I'm right there. That's all I can tell you. Listen, as far as I'm concerned, I'm going to teach you, because I know from the last show, I heard that Independence Day show and how you're not really into barbecues. I don't know why. No, me personally, I'm not. I don't know how that's possible. I barbecue every weekend. I barbecue every week. I barbecue during the weekends. I, I, I barbecue. In fact, I barbecue in the wintertime. When's the last time you used an actual oven inside? Barbecue uh, well, there's some of these recipes will require a bit of an internal uh, device, such as a... And, and oven, so you'll see that I do that to supplement. All right. All uh, right. But right now, the first thing you want to do is you want to, and you need to set the tone with the barbecue, and there's nothing better than a ball game as far as I'm concerned. So let's turn on the radio and get a ball game going first. All right? The two runs, four hits, there we three go. Hours, two left on. If you don't the Dodgers, two enjoy... <laughs> what is this ball game? This isn't a current ball game, obviously. This is a game from my childhood. Trust me, you'll enjoy it. It's from the 1952 World Series. <laughs> And I, it's just Phil a memory. Yes, yeah, okay, I'm a little prickly about this. It's a very exciting memory to me. So let's not get a little uh, upset. But let's also set the tone here. You got to have shade. You got to have a pool or sprinklers for the kids there. Wait, wait, what happened? Wait. What happened? I missed That's that. That's Rizzuto. He, he, he bounced out to, uh, to, to short. Yeah. Oh, well, I got really excited about nothing there. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean to distract you. It was just listening, listening to the ball game, as you called it. Go ahead. <laughs> Listen, I, I, I'm sorry. This is your first time hosting Barbecue Guy. I'm throwing you off. I'm sorry. Are, are you okay? You're getting your papers together I'm over there? I'm getting my papers together all as all right, well. well. We got the music playing. We're all relaxed right here. And um, All right. Well, basically what I want to say is besides that, you got to have plenty of seats. you got to get everyone outside, get them out of the kitchen. These characters show up. I know all the time people show up like you, and you sit in the kitchen. And everyone's talking about this and that in the kitchen. It's not a kitchen. It's a barbecue. Get outside to the outside deck, to the environment. There's shade. There's a pool. There's, uh, there's a lot of uh, fun and frivolity, if you will. Go all right. Now, but usually, barbecue guy, the... the the, the guy is out barbecuing, right? The wife is inside, and she's the one in the kitchen, so when everybody shows up, we're just kind of following the lead. That's why I don't understand why everybody's outside. I should be outside when they're inside talking to my wife. Everyone wants to talk to the wife. No one wants to talk to me. Now, finally, I got the reins of the control over this station here. You're listening to me. You got no choice. I got news for you. Get outside. My wife is too nice to say, get outside. Everybody, get outside. So bypass the wife, say, hello, how you doing, right outside. And you know how I do it nicely? I go ahead and I have the, 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 the liquor and the and in a bin. You can have your wine in a bin with ice. You can have your, uh, your beer. Forget the mixed drinks. There's too much aggravation. Your soda, your root beer. So when people want something to drink, they get sucked into going outside. They got to talk to the barbecue guy. Yeah. When they turn to the barbecue guy, they see my apron. 
I got a million of them. You were okay. Interesting. I got an apron licensed to grill. All right, and it's got a, it's got a ham, two hamburgers and then two hot dogs with a 007 underneath it. All right. Okay. Well, at least they're not corny aprons. So okay. What else you got? <laughs> I got Kiss the Chef. Kiss. I got over forty and still cooking. What do you you got any ideas? Over oh, forty and still. Cooking. You like that one? Uh, don't worry. Everything is under control. I see, and and the viewers can't viewers. The listeners can't see this, but everything under control. The letters are blocked out because there's obviously some burning going on. I love it. Okay. I love it. How about who are these kids and why do they expect me to feed them? I like that one. I got that. I got life's a game. Barbecue is serious. That's my significant best. New York Yankees, if you will, home jersey. That's what I wear. Life's a game. Barbecue is serious. <laughs> Carnivores hate vegetables, but they love vegetarians. Oh, right, here's a good one. It's five o'clock somewhere, meaning time to eat. Is that <laughs> could also mean a happy hour? I go for that as well. Um, how about this one? I, my wife likes this one. She she really. This is later on in the night. I put this one on. Barbecue naked. Show off your buns. You yeah. don't go for that one? Yeah. No, no. It, right. They're very clever. All right. So there, that's that. Now, as far as I'm concerned, we're outside. It's time to have a little cocktail. Uh-huh. You want to pour the wine. Thank you. I like how you shut the game off and are pouring the cocktail at the I'm same very time. Very serious about the whole thing. You got to have it. Take a drink. Enjoy it. Some champagne punch. What's this? Uh, that Dave, must, you're hungry. Must be my stomach growling. Just stomach growling. All right. I understand. Let's get back to it. First, maybe we could put that ball game back on. I don't know. I think that would be nice to have in the background. But if not, it's all right. We got the cooler with the tub of ice. We got a champagne punch. I want to tell you what to do with the champagne punch. Champagne punch. Take a cheap champagne, not a Cook's. It'll give you a headache. But give you a cheap champagne, <laughs> not the Cook's. I'll say it again. What do you mean, the, not the Cook's? There's a Cook's champagne. It's really... Going to give you a headache if you drink it. It's a, the brand it's name horrible. is Cooks? It's like a seven dollar bottle of champagne. Okay. Please stop buying the Cooks, please. Okay. All right. No Cooks. But there are some good ones out there. Inexpensive, fifteen dollar bottle of champagne will do it. Okay. Give yourself two or three of them. Throw it in. Throw it in the uh, the punch bowl. You got to have a punch bowl. Right. Ice, obviously. Get yourself the newest thing that I just love is the pomegranate and cranberry juice mix. Have you I seen this? I did. I didn't picture you as a pomegranate guy, but all right. I got an inner. You change it with the times. There's an like inner it. kid there. There's an inner kid, a softy. Trust me, the pomegranate's a big hit. But make sure it's 100% juice. I don't want this uh, other stuff. It's got to say 100% juice on it. Okay. Slice some strawberries. Trust me, you want your vegetables, your fruits, everything fresh. Strawberries. You know how to slice a strawberry? Uh, yeah, yeah. What do you slice it? Uh, you slice it uh, from from the green part down. Correct. And yeah. then what do you do? Then you throw it in the pot. No, you got to slice it four times again. Cut it in quarters, ah. please. The juice from that strawberry will come out when you do that. If you leave I it see. whole, the juice doesn't come out. Right. Slice it four ways, please. Okay. It's very easy. Not eight ways. Four. Oh, four, eight. Okay. Eight ways. What do you got? Like a three-year-old at home? You got to eat that. <laughs> Please. Okay. For, okay. I'm not sure I get the connection, but okay. you're making mincemeat out of a strawberry. How big do you think a strawberry is eight times? <laughs> Throw the strawberry in there. And now mix it up a bit. I don't know why you're laughing at me. It's serious stuff. Stop it, laughing. What, what, what do you mean mix it up a bit? What mix is that? it up a bit. Use one of those wooden uh, ladles. Okay. And pour All yourself right. a nice cocktail. Then, Just yourself or your guests also? No, pour it for yourself. Everybody else will join in on that. Got it. And turn on the ball game. We'll be right back. I want to hear the old time Yankees theme song. Anybody remember that song? With the with the with the words? Yeah, of course. Well, usually they're playing now the one without the words. Without the words. Yeah. Well, this I'm playing the one with the words. I like the words. All right. So so far, they're going to so learn good. to fear the Yankees. That's one of the. You know the words? Oh, I know all the words. Play a little bit. So, can you do a little something? Here come there? The Yankees. Let's get behind and cheer the Yankees. They're going to learn to fear the Yankees. Everyone knows they play to win. To say the least, I think you'd say you're a Yankee fan. I am a Yankee fan. What about we're broadcasting all over the country? Does it have to be a Yankee Doesn't game? Doesn't have to be a Yankee game. I think what would be a great show for you guys to do, this character comes back from this eternal convention, I don't know what the heck he's doing over there. When he comes back, what I think you should do, 
Listen to me. Don't laugh. I'm, Take yeah. some notes. You got a pen? I know you don't even look at the book. The guy's got a book here with all kind of notes, everything. I mean, look at the book. I, so I listen to the show. I see what goes on. You're winging it. I get it. This is what I got. This is what Isn't I need. that obvious? I got a pen, though. Go ahead. You got a piece Go. of paper right there? Okay. Yeah. This yep. is what you got to do. Write down for a show. Theme songs. Not for TV shows. I heard the six TV shows theme song. I get you. All right. I know how you made six shows out of that, but all right. <laughs> theme songs for baseball teams. Every team's got a theme song. That's a great idea. Thank you very much. Investigate. See why they play that song. What's the history? I'd love to know what the Miami Marlins theme song sounds like. Are they quoting Jeff Conine, the original uh, uh, you know, original Marlin? Or who's their hero? I want to know what's going on with the other, the other parts of the country. I'm really surprised Doug hasn't thought of this already, but uh, that's, that's good that you did. Hey, he doesn't like know it. everything. Trust me. He knows pop culture. and no sports. We'll be right back. You're listening to Everything Old is New Again, America's entertainment pop culture talk show with Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. Whoa, heart. Ho, ho. Hey, how are those tails? What? Who's saying something about my tails are killers at 28 bucks a pound? 28? Oh, my God. You know, Chet and I have met lobster in an age, oh. not since our anniversary anyway. Oh. How about the gourmet here? You know what he wanted? Hot dogs. Oh, God. I heard that guy, Dan Aykroyd, he's been on your show, referenced on your show quite a number of times. This is Everything Old is New Again. We're back. This is the barbecue guy with David Cohen. That's from the great outdoors. Dan Aykroyd, John Candy, a couple guys barbecuing. They love it a barbecue. It's a great barbecue. It's time to barbecue. It's summertime. Barbecue time. Before we get to the barbecue, we got to have some appetizers. You uh, can't have a barbecue without appetizers. You into it? Into it? I'm ready. All Bring right. them out, baby. First and foremost, you got a taco salad dip. Even you could do this one. Really? Even you. I'll tell you what you do. You take out one of those Pyrex dishes, you know, the, the ones I'm talking the about? The glass, yeah. Right. right. Take out a nice little something like a spoon. Spoon in there, some refried like beans. Like a spoon or a Like spoon? a spoon. You could use anything you like. You use a knife if you wanted to. Fork, okay. it's up to you. Uh, refried beans, cream cheese on top, chopped chilies. Chopped chilies. They're green. They're in a can. Trust me. Mexican cheese. They're in a package. You'll see Mexican it. Mexican cheese? It just says what Mexican <laughs> cheese on it. Trust where you, me. Where are you it's, shopping It's sliced this? up like a, like a, already sliced. And you put that on top, <laughs> throw it in the microwave oven, put a little t- little uh, cellophane, cellophane on top of that so it doesn't spray all over the place. Microwave, about five minutes. Okay. Come out. Do me a favor. Do yourself a favor. Yeah. Tostitos scoop chips. Scoop chips. I don't want to have. I don't want these tortillas. T- tortillas that break into the right. You know, the ones strong, that you know. like form the pocket. Correct. Right? You're a good man. Yeah. Good man. You know what I'm talking about. Scoop them up. Somewhat. Yeah. Enjoy okay. it. Scoop up not just the top where the cheese is melted. Scoop everything all the way down you, you to can, the refried. And you want to get that Mexican cheese flavor in there. Yes. Okay. If someone's and just taking the cheese off the top, they're banned. Out. Banned. Put them back in the kitchen. <laughs> they can go talk to the wife in the kitchen if they're taking just the cheese. Oh, you still got the wife in the kitchen. She's always She's, in the kitchen, that right. kid. She's just trying to hide from me. Trust me. Okay. <laughs> now, listen, just because I got a crazy accent doesn't mean these, these recipes aren't serious. I, have, I haven't noticed the accent, but okay. <laughs> um. <laughs> or a crazy voice or something <laughs> off about me. That's all right. Trust me. Next, this is for the kids. They love this. I want to say to you, by the way, this is not gourmet. I am a not a gourmet guy, obviously. Uh, obviously. I know I sound like Chef Ramsay, but I'm not Chef Ramsay. <laughs> but I want you to understand that this is to get you in the ballpark with a barbecue. Well, I, I figured when you bought the chopped chilies in a can and the Mexican cheese with absolutely no further description, that you were, you were not I, uh, a high-class chef. You're just you. You're an ordinary guy. I'm a regular Joe, and trust me, the food's going to be tremendous. Everybody's going to love it and walk out very happy. You're not getting a dish with a hamburger and it's a, a slider. What is this slider guy? Uh, I don't understand that either. Give me yeah. a break, please. Give and, me a real... We'll get to the hamburgers, but I mean, come on. You're not getting that kind of a nonsense. You're getting real food here, like sour cream. You put it in a bowl. Okay. Mix French. This is a new recipe of now? Of course. Okay. Of course. Please catch up. <laughs> Lipton French onion soup mix. You mix it together. It's a dip. It's a tremendous. I said it's for the it, kids. But anybody it's can. The, this but, is for the kids. Everybody, everybody a, can do it. But do you do it? When's the last time you did it? 
<laughs> but you're going to come up with some great recipes. That's like a basic recipe that every college kid knows. I told make. you it's not gourmet. <laughs> this is for the kids. Okay, for the kids. This is for the kids. I got to tell you 16 times. You're going to start to get me upset now. <laughs> and when you're eating this, when you're serving this, I don't want any other chips. No other chips than Ruffles, please. Ruffles. Ruffles. They can withstand when you dip into the sour cream. It does. It is. And by the way, I know the Seinfeld double dipping. It's on your lips. You're, you're, out, you're about ready to reference the Seinfeld. I wasn't going to say anything. I don't want to hear the double dipping. That's it. Well, how do you feel about double dipping? It's, it's a catchphrase. I've heard the show about the catchphrase, the double dipping. I heard. I know. I get it. It's not but that you, funny. But do you double dip? That's my question. No, because I've got I've got myself some nice fr- nice ruffled chips. Ruffles, you scoop it up, you eat it, you get another one. Okay. That's it. Good. Double dipping. Now, listen, as far as I'm concerned, chips are the best. If you don't like them, that's up to you. I'm having a few. Now, you can have so, some too. Knock yourself out. It sounds like several people are eating this. Well, the guy in the booth there might have <laughs> some too. Trust me. <laughs> I don't know what the is, right? Producer, director. We're heard chewing guy in stereo. It's quite interesting. Okay. All right. So what else? So the kids are busy now, eating the dip again. We with, got the taco salad. All right. What else you have for us? We got nice pigs in a blanket. Nah. Please stop buying the frozen pigs in a blanket. My mother-in-law brings over the frozen pigs in a blanket every single Christmas Eve. I got to throw them in the garbage. I don't <laughs> want. The, I don't want the frozen pre-made pigs in a blanket. Please. The garbage? Yeah, the garbage. Where are you from, Bar? Are you, I, I'm, I'm a little confused about where your hometown is. First, I thought it was Chicago. It was New York. Now I'm here in Boston. I've lived in Chicago. I've lived in New York. And I've lived in Boston. I got all kind of accents. I'm all screwed up. Why do you think the wife stays in the kitchen? Listen, <laughs> we're back to the pigs in a blanket. Make it fresh, please. You get the boar's head. They make the little itsy bitsy. Uh, oh, we got brand names mini. now. It's good. It's very, very specific. Boar's well, head, yeah. mini Franks. Correct. Okay. They make they make the little mini Franks. They're sure. in a, a vacuum packed. Package. All right. That's what you want to have. You can keep them for a couple of days before you get involved. You open that up, you're good. Next, you need to have Pillsbury Crescent Roll. You know that little that thing you hit yeah. on the table? You see that commercial? You yeah. hit on the table, it opens sure. up. Poke them you're in not the making belly. bread from fresh here. We're just getting involved with the Pillsbury, please. Right. With the Crescent Roll. <laughs> you open that up. You take it out. You cut it into triangles. <laughs> roll the crescent roll, a little bit of it, around each of these little pigs in a blanket. You can't make it overnight. You got to make it the day of. That's what the wife's doing in the kitchen. I didn't want to let you know earlier. Okay. That's what she's doing. So the so the raw dough, the raw mini hot dog, you're rolling it up. Okay. Correct. Great. Put it on a tin, get right. it in the oven. It's not a barbecue secret. It's not something you barbecue. <laughs> Did you, you park out front or did you park in the uh, garage? Yes, I learned the pigs in a blanket in Boston. My days in Boston when I went to college there re- reminds me of that. Anyway, long story short, what you want to do. Who too says late. long story short anymore? What's that all it's about? It's too late already anyway. It's, a, it's already a long story. All right, so you put, um, in, you put them in a tin. How long do you show them? The oven's got to be about 400. You got to make sure, please, trust me on this. Every minute you got to turn these things. You got to turn them Every or they'll minute. burn. They're going to burn like you can't believe. You're going to be eating charcoal. You want to turn them, turn them, turn them. About 15, no, nah, what am I going to say in 15? I'm going to screw Seven minutes, eight minutes in, that's eight turns. You're done. Pull them out. Mustard. Anybody wants ketchup? Pull them out. Mustard? What do you mean? You got to have some mustard. Okay. In the I, thought, of the dish. I thought maybe they became mustard. Mustard right. with a middle, middle right, of middle of it. Take your mustard. Head. Okay. Listen, pal. <laughs> cool He's it. getting angry. Cool All right. It. Sorry. I, I was a little confused. Mustard in the middle of the dish is what I'm trying to tell you. Ah. All okay. right. Right. You surround them with the pigs in a blanket. So you dip them. Toothpicks, please. Ah. Toothpicks. We don't have this, some nonsense. Even with the kids, let them have the toothpicks. They're not going to die. Three year old knows they're not to eat a toothpick. Trust me. All right. <laughs> it's okay. Everybody with the safety with the little kids. Let them use a toothpick, please. <laughs> safety with little kids. In fact, in fact, you know what you do? Doesn't get, make sense. Get yourself a toothpick that looks like a sword for the little kid. He won't swallow right. it. Trust me. He'll love it. He'll be sword fighting with his kid later on, with his, with his brother later so on. So they're playing with the sharp, small, pointed objects. Exactly. All right, good. It's not down their throat. Don't worry about it. All they're right. not going to choke. That's your pigs in a blanket. Trust me, every kid on the planet's going to love it. They're done. You're, they're out of your hair. Then we can really get involved with a nice shrimp cocktail. And the more for me, less for the kids, the merrier. Get them out of the house <laughs> with the pigs in a blanket. I want to get involved with shrimp cocktail. I mean, you peel a shrimp cocktail. You understand what I'm talking about? You, you peel, peel a shrimp. Yeah, I was going to say. Okay. You can get them frozen if you want. By the way, they're always frozen in the store. They're right. unfreezing them if you're buying them at that counter. Trust me. What you want to do, either you're buying them fresh, which is re- fresh unfrozen, or frozen and you, you defrost, defrost them. them. That's fine. They'll tell you that they took the vein out. There's only 
one vein they took out. You turn the shrimp over, there's another vein. You got to devein the shrimp. Second uh-huh. vein's got to come out. It's an aggravation. Trust me. You get a lot of backache. You got to start. You got to have something to back drink. Backache from the from deveining. Yeah, you okay. got to have a drink while you're deveining. Trust me, I'm telling you, it's not. It's really not easy. So what I'm going to say is this. You... <laughs> I'm having a drink. Relax. There we go. It's okay. amazing how you can drink and talk at I'm the gonna same time. I'm going to take one more drink before I get involved. Don't talk while you're... There you go. Very good. Don't say very good till I'm done drinking, please. <laughs> Interrupting me. You got to hear that. Every time you have a drink, you got to... Okay, regardless. You want to have a plate of ice. Make sure you got a nice bowl of ice. You're going to boil water. You're taking those shrimp that you've deveined. You're throwing them in the water. Boiled water, they got to be boiled. It's got to be boiling. You devein it. You boil it, stays in there, and that in boiling water for like 15, 20 seconds, 30 seconds tops. Wow. Throw them back in the ice. When they cool, you put them on lettuce. Again, with the toothpicks, trust me, you're going to have a nice time for yourself. You're going to have a couple of chips. We'll be right back. Everything old is new again. He might have my mouth. Say, hey, Charlie, why the arm in the sling? Yeah, I walked straight into that busted street sign in front of Frank's Automat. Well, you must have been really sore at him. You said it, pal. I said, say, what's a big idea making a fella trip out there? I was going to sock him right in a kisser. He's all wet. Why, you ought to sue him, Charlie. I have half a mind to do just that. But where am I going to get that kind of dough? Say, I know a fella just got me out of a big jam, and he didn't break the bank. You yeah, don't say. Yeah, the law office of Douglas Viviani. The law office? Office of Douglas Viviani? That's right, the law office of Douglas Viviani. Viviani. That's what I said, Viviani. He a straight shooter? He's a cat's meow. He's on the up and up? Doug's ace is with me. Is that so? He's a bee's bees. Well, that's just swell. You have his number? You can call him at 631-681-1910 or email him at vivianilaw.com. Wait, what, what was that last part? What, email? Yeah, what's email? Vivianilaw.com. Now, back to America's entertainment pop culture talk show, Everything Old is New Again, with Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. Hey. What, is, what is happening now, Jay? Well, we're going to return to Everything Old is New Again with uh, uh, Doug and Dave. Oh, okay. I got nothing else better to do. Pulling muscles from a shell. Pulling muscles from a shell. Hey, we're back again. This is David Cohen. Everything old is new again. That's one of my favorite songs of all time, and it reminds me of the summer, Pulling Muscles from a Shell by uh, uh, by Squeeze. And uh, again, Douglas Viviani is not here today. Uh, again, I am not hosting. I am still, you know, co-host, whatever that means. And uh, we have, in place of Doug, just to remind you, Barbecue Guy, who's been really helping us out with some great barbecue recipes. And uh, speaking of pulling muscles from a shell, Barbecue Guy, why don't you give us the next recipe? Recipe, thank you very much. Before I go any further, I understand that you want to be the host of the show, but Ed McMahon never hosted the show and Carson left, left either, did he? <laughs> you are correct, All sir. Right, thank you very much. Listen, clams on the half shell. <laughs> it's it's perfect for that pulling well, muscles I, from a shell song. And I was on the loading dock back in the day. We used to listen to that pulling muscles from a shell and think about clams on a grill. Well, how do you... But, I thought you're. I thought I thought this was going to be about muscles, which is why I played the song. Have you had muscles on the grill? Do you know what a muscle looks like on a grill? Does a muscle open up when it's on the grill? Do you have any idea what you're talking about? I'm thinking the answer to all that is no. Correct. Okay. <laughs> so we're talking about clams. Use your imagination. They look the same, don't they? They're just a different color. You uh, put the clams on the grill. Not really. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's going to get me. Boy. I'm really going to. This guy is really something. Mm. Barbecue. That's a guy I like to have. All right, bye. give me a little support there from the Simpsons. Listen. All right, clams. Yes, go. Get your nice clams. You get the smaller clams, the better. You get the nice little neck clams. Little neck. Cherry stones are a little big, a little chewy. I like them. The wife doesn't like them. You like the smaller ones. A guy like you, you're going to like the small ones. Trust me. Put the small one on the grill. <laughs> Okay. Hey, you don't like the big, the chewy clam. I like clam. you. We're going to like the smaller one. All right. <laughs> fine. Let's go with it. The little neck. Okay. So <clears throat> you put it on the grill. Close the grill. Let it cook. Close Let the it grill. simmer at its own juices. Right. And in sort about, of like what you're doing right now. Correct. Simmering in your own juices. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and about sometimes things think like a great idea at the time. Then sometimes <laughs> they don't. 
It's a great idea to put the clams on a half shell. Trust me. All right. What you want to do, you put them on. They'll open up in about five minutes' time. In the meantime, okay. you got to put get together some butter, some garlic, and just let them simmer with a little bit of lemon juice. When when do you put the butter in the put garlic? Put the butter, garlic, and lemon juice together on a separate little plate or a dish, whatever you want to do. Make sure it all melts. You dish that out to the, all your individual guests. They listen, hold on to this for a second. You put it in front of their drink Hold on or to this for a sec. Exactly. Okay, yeah. And then you take the grill. The, you open the grill. Open you it. take the clams off the grill, and you serve them. There's nothing better. Trust See, me. See, now I usually pour this stuff on the on the clams. You don't do that? Ridiculous. Absolutely <laughs> asinine. I don't know where you're getting these ideas from. you got to okay. stop. You reminded me of this commercial. It's all I can say at this point. To all these special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions, all the sesame seeds, onions. Everybody's singing these songs. They're talking about burgers. Everybody's from McDonald's. Everybody's got their two cents. You're going to tell me how to make burgers next? Listen, <laughs> it's enough already with the commentary. Now I know why Ed McMahon never hosted The Tonight Show. <laughs> Bottom line, with the burgers, yes. get yourself your, your 80, 20% meat. It's got to have 20% fat. If it doesn't have fat Wait. in it, it's not going to taste any good. Stop 20% already. 20% meat? What 20% is- fat, 80% meat. Listen, oh, okay. I know everybody with the healthy, with the healthy. You're at a barbecue. You're not going to eat healthy. I got news for you. All right? Make it yourself. You want to make a nice burger yourself. I agree. Everybody with the healthy. It's I enough could, already. Couldn't have you said go, it better. Listen, I got a nice commercial for you. I heard last week or a couple weeks back that Independence Day showed that guy. He couldn't figure out what was what it was called to make a, a, a nice little pocket in the middle of your burger. It's called the Stuffs. S-T-U-F-Z. Listen to the commercial. Maybe you'll get an idea. But one of the hottest trends right now is the stuffed burger. Here's what you do. One, press your base. Look at how deep that cup is. Two, fill with stuffing. Three, add your top patty and press. That's it. All right, you get the idea? I thought that was your idea. I, well, listen, I'm, I'm a good guy. I, I'm going to give credit where credit is due. Okay, all right. All right. Like, when you deserve credit, when you deserve something for me nice to say about you, I'll say it. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't happened yet. You'll see it. It'll happen. Trust me. Maybe when we say goodbye. I don't know. Listen, all I can tell you is this. It's time to put the barbecue on. Ah, oh, it's another thing. It was a, gl- gl- a, gla- a gas barbecue, please. Gas. Everybody with this nonsense with the coals, the coals, the coals. It's not 1947. We got gas. Use the gas. It's very simple. You turn it on, you got fire. You cook on a flame boil, broiled grill. That's it. Stop with all the charcoals, please. Right. Charcoal's good for one thing, for your kid's stocking when the kid's not good on Christmas morning. <laughs> That's it. Okay. That's why it's not a good gift. You can't use it for anything. All right. Anyway, back to it. What I want you to do is I want you to... We talked about the burgers. You have to stuff your stuff them. You can stuff right. them with anything. Yep. You can stuff with cheese. You can stuff with peppers and onions, spinach, mushrooms, whatever you want. Wow. Put it all together. Salt and pepper on the top. Put it on the grill. High grill. Sit there, sit there please. I know, you, I know, you, I know you're going to do this. You're going to press I down pressed, on the I burger. I press down on the burger. And you think that's good. I... Yeah, that's what I've heard All you do. All the juices are going through that burger, to the fire, and it's going to flame up. It ain't working. Turn it over once. Let it simmer again. What happened to that barbecue? I think it went, Put that ga- barbecue back on. Your gas went out. Don't turn it off. <laughs> now, listen, as far as I'm concerned... Yeah, charcoals, it wouldn't be going out. <laughs> okay, listen, anyway. I, my mother said, if I can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. That's why I was silent there. Listen, as far as I'm concerned... Hot dogs are the next thing on the menu. We got to move along here. Get the hot dogs with the casing. Stop with the hot dogs, everybody, with skinless hot dogs. They're horrible. You want a hot dog that crunches when you chew into it. So what kind of hot dogs have the, the casing? The boar's on? head hot dogs with the casing, natural casing right on it. What's natural casing? Do you know what that is? Read the label and you buy I, it. That's re- it. You don't need to know anything not. else, Mr. Health Food. <laughs> now, what you're going to do next... In the casing, you put it on the grill, let it go. Turn it a couple of times. Hot dogs are already cooked. You can eat them raw if you want to. So just heat it up nice. Don't overcook them. Let me tell you this. You got to get a roll that's sliced on top. You know the rolls I'm talking about? The hot dog rolls? No. You want the hot dog rolls? They slice them in the middle. I, I want that slice right down the top. So you're you're not putting a hot dog in this in, in the side of the oh, bun. Oh, I see. So the you, bun is sliced on top. Okay, so not sliced all the way through. You mean just a little slit so that the hot dog sits on the top part? On the of top, it. correct. Okay. Well, I'm not really saying that, but you can. You know, that's good enough for now. You put your <laughs> mustard on it. The best thing: turn the mustard into the roll. 
Don't eat the hot dog with the mustard exposed. It gets all over your face. Turn the mustard portion of the hot dog into the bread so it's protected. Would you please? Okay. Now, finally, as far as I'm concerned with hot dogs, I love them with baked beans on top. This is just my thing. You can have it. You can do whatever you like. I got news for you. It's a lot of fun. Now, the baked beans. You They're just, good for your heart. And, and yes. The more you eat, the more you Yeah. Yeah. So you buy them in a, in a can, obviously. You don't spend a lot of time baking the beans, right? Heinz, whatever, is sitting there. Listen, I got recipes for all this stuff. You think I got time to tell you how to make a baked bean? Open the damn... Oh, excuse me. Open them. I'm not on the radio here. <laughs> Open a can, pour it into the dish, and cook it, please. Pour it into the dish. Come on, right. enough already. Got it. Now, got it. I got a recipe for baby back ribs. You got sweet baby Wait, ribs. Wait, can, can I just ask a quick question? Ask all you dogs. like. Uh, uh, sa- are you a sauerkraut guy in your on your? No, hot dog? I don't go for sauerkraut. I go for baked beans. I just told you that. I don't want you <laughs> listening to me. What the, what's going on? Did I mention sauerkraut? All Anybody right. say sauerkraut? I need a drink. Give me a drink. Holy smokes, alive! Oh, you got some wine Keep going. Pouring out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you got the baby back ribs. You got yeah. a nice sweet baby ray sauce. Sweet baby ray. What I want you to do is take those ribs and put them in the oven for about. Uh, I would say about 20 minutes. I, I usually put them in for longer. All right, we'll be right back. Meet the Mets. Meet the Mets. Step right up and greet the Mets. Bring your kiddies. Bring your wife. I get the advice on his ribs. You want to put it in for a longer in the oven, please. You can put it in longer if you want. What are you getting? What are you eating? You're going to eat a, you're gonna a piece of this table here next for lunch? You're going to put a little ketchup on the table and eat it? Please, you can't cook the meat too long. Oh, so you put it into the oven. This is what you do. You cook your ribs ahead of time. You put them in the oven nice. Right. Let them cook on. When the... you say put them in nice, what is that? Just gently, so our listeners nice understand. Nice and gently. Okay. You don't don't want just shove breaking. them in there. You, don't, you know what? You don't want to have things on your hand, burns on your hands from that oven. That's about 425 degrees. Okay. So right. carefully, you mean. Just Play put them in carefully. Gently. Nice. Very gently. You're pressing it in. You're cooking it for a good 20 minutes. You're taking it out. You're slicing the ribs. You get me? Slice them at that time. Then get yourself a nice tin that you can throw away. You pour sweet baby raised sauce into the tin. Mix in those ribs. Go out to the barbecue. Barbecue those ribs at that point in time. Now, remember, they're just about cooked. Now right. you're going for flavor. Okay. You got the sauce on it. Right. You're barbecue and barbecue and barbecue and turning, turning, turning. Pay attention. Don't let them burn. I know a guy like you. I know. You put it on the grill. You put it. You put the top down on the grill, and you go talk to your buddies about the Yankees. I heard all about it. Listen, it ain't good. You got to pay attention pay to attention. what you're cooking. Okay. Turn them, turn them, How turn often them. do you turn them? Continuously. Continuous turning. Continuously. Take them out after about, I would say, uh, 15 turns, which is maybe about five minutes, 10 minutes. You're done. Trust me. Even a Met fan. Even a Met fan. <laughs> I'll be right back and everything old is new again. I'm a good guy here with Dave Cohen trying to talk about everything old is new again. Dot biz. <laughs> he knows the web. Biz stuff is whatever. Biz. Couldn't get the dot com. Now, back to America's entertainment pop culture talk show, Everything Old is New Again, with Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. Yeah, Viviani's not here. This is the barbecue guy. I'm here with David Cohen. We're back. I took over the reins here, and we're going to talk and continue to talk about barbecuing. Yeah, and you got some more recipes for us. I got a bunch of recipes. I got tons. I could be here forever. I could have a whole show. I don't know what this old is new again stuff. What it has to do, barbecues have been going on forever. We learned a lot about barbecues. Barbecues are still in flavor. Everybody loves a barbecue. You get all these shows, all these shows everywhere. Guess what? On TV, there's barbecue shows. I like that barbecues are still in flavor. I, They're that's still good, in flavor. That's a good catchphrase. All right. Like that's that. going to be yeah. on my apron next week. <laughs> It's a good one. I gotta make that. You can make your own aprons, too. Well, we'll me. talk about next week later, but okay, keep going. I'll be back next week, or there's going to be some problems, trust me. Or if I'm not back next week, I'll be back sometime. No, we'd love to have you back. You're, you're coming back, All no right. doubt. How about a nice flank steak? You like a flank I steak? I like flank steak. You can get a nice price on a flank steak. It's a piece of steak. It kind of rolls up. You want to unroll it. You got a nice piece of meat. It's thin, delicious. My mother-in-law, I'll tell you what she does. She scores it. 
Stop scoring the flank steak. Stop scoring any steak. Please. You know what a scoring is? You have anyone talking about? I know how to score a ball game. I don't know how to score a they, steak. They take the knife and they're cutting the meat on top before they cook it and making uh, slices in it. Why are they doing that? All yeah. the juices are coming out the meat. Stop with the scoring. That's like for the Galloping Gourmet in 1947. Stop with the scoring already. <laughs> what you want to do is you want to take the soy vey. I was mentioned previously. It's a, soy vey? It's a soy vey sauce. You take the soy vey. You marinate the flank steak the night before in a Ziploc bag. Make sure you close the bag tightly, please. Put it in the uh, refrigerator. In the refrigerator. Thank you. I couldn't think of the word. So anyway. Frigidaire, and maybe from your That's your what I'm trying to think. Right. I was going to say icebox, but okay. <laughs> so you got yourself a flank steak the next day. You take it, throw it on the grill, high yeah. flame, high flame, high flame. Remember, the grill's got to have a high flame. What kind of flame? High flame. There you go, high flame. Now, let it sit there. Don't push your steak around. Don't touch it. Let it be. <laughs> Turn it over after about six minutes. Time it. Six minutes. Turn it over. You have this down to a science. I sure do. All right. That's why I'm on the radio. What do you think? You, I just, <laughs> just picked up this gig overnight? Six minutes, you could have a drink, basically. You can have a drink if you want to have a drink, but don't lose control. Don't have too many drinks when you're, when you're barbecuing. you right. got to take could control. Take care. You can have your drinks afterwards, all right. right? Now, what you do is you turn it over. What you want to do is feel your forehead. If you feel your forehead, feel it right now. Feel it. Right. All right. You okay. feel how hard that is? Yeah. That's when you touch a steak. Not as hard as yours, I'm sure. Correct. Okay. That's when you touch a steak. Not as hard as yours is going to be in a few minutes. <laughs> so you keep interrupting me here. Run out of time. I see the clock ticking, ticking, yeah, not, ticking. Not, I got not, not sure what that meant, but okay. I got recipes. <laughs> As far as I'm concerned, we got flank steak on the grill. Right. We want to make sure it's cooked right. Right. So if you want it well done, touch the touch steak, touch, touch your forehead. If it feels like your forehead is well done. Ah. If you touch your nose and it feels like your nose, it's medium rare. Interesting. If you touch your chin and it feels like your chin, the give your chin's got there, you don't got much of a chin, but most of us has got a nice chin there. You got a chin, you feel it, go ahead. Touch the steak, that's rare. That's how you know it's done. Stop cutting into the steak and trying to figure out if the steak is done. Do it by touch, please. Take it off the grill. Let it sit for five minutes. It's got to stay there. All the juices stay in the steak that way. Then it's charcoal on the outside. It's beautiful, medium rare on the inside, which is what I would suggest. And you slice and it. What you suggest? Okay. When you suggest it, <laughs> but I would like you. This guy's really asking for it. I'll tell you, boy. <laughs> How I got how you even gave the Ed McMahon position I'd like to know. Listen, what you want to do is you slice and you slice against the grain. Against the grain. You know what I'm talking against. about? Against the grain. Against the grain, you got yourself a flank steak. Next, asparagus. You gotta have some asparagus. The ladies, everybody's gonna be asking, where are the greens? Where are the greens? Where are the greens? <laughs> oh, you got yourself okay. some asparagus, okay? Take those asparagus. At least we're not being sexist. That's the important thing. Listen. You really, you really follow the the pre-broadcast rules. I'm glad you. I'm not cursing, am I? No. Now yeah. listen, we got the asparagus. You break the asparagus tips off. You know how you break the tips off? You just touch. You just touch and break. It's you. You bend. You bend. When it breaks, it breaks. That's how you prepare an asparagus. You douse it in oil, garlic. Throw it on the grill. You want to throw it on something that's got a pan. They have these pans. You, any kind of pan you want. Put it on the grill, cook it under a low heat. Turn that heat down a little bit and let it cook. You want it to be mm. al dente. Turn them every so often. Keep turning them. Then towards the end, when you're about seven, eight minutes in, throw some almonds on there. Almonds? You're going to have yourself asparagus Whole almondine. Almonds? Asparagus almondine. Almond slices. Slice guy. Okay. I'm just asking. All right. <laughs> it's, a, it's a valid question for a novice like you. I understand. <laughs> Asparagus with the almond slice right. and throw a little lemon on top. Trust me, you'll walk away from that that barbecue with a date. If you make that and you didn't have a date before, you got a date after. The women okay. are going to love you, in other words. Okay, I see. To say. All right, okay. Got now, it. Got you it. got yourself corn on the cob, right? <laughs> what you want to do is pre-boil some of that corn on the cob for a little while in the, in, in the inside. That's what the wife's doing in the kitchen. She's boiling that corn on the cob. When it's almost done, you know what corn on the cob is done? You can put your fork through it. You really? understand this? Yeah. Okay. So we're taking it just about at that time, rolling them up in tin foil. Before you do that, make sure you got the butter. Butter's got to be all throughout that item. You take them out, throw them on the grill for about another five, seven minutes. You got your butters melted. You got a nice, hot, fresh corn on the cob. Trust me, everybody's going to love it. All right. All right. Stop. Please, everybody. 
Stop Stop. cutting the corn off the cob. Eat it like a human being. (laughs) Eat it like you're like a. I know typewriters aren't in fashion anymore, but eat it like a typewriter. You go, you know what it used to be. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I think so. All right. Now, for the dessert, what you want to do is have a nice little melon. Watermelon, any kind of melon you like. (laughs) I'm going to relax now. I'm all done with that grill. (laughs) Clean that grill off, turn it out, turn it off, and I want watermelon. Seedless, please. Seedless? Yes. That's pretty advanced for you. All right. Oh. I know. I mean, uh, I thought you'd be old school with it. That's all. And just cut it and slice it away, and you got yourself a nice barbecue. Now, you got a problem. Got a problem with uh, my problem. I got a guy like this at the barbecue. Beside yourself, I got this guy. You need help with a grill, Eddie? No, thanks, Clark. Don't have one. I'll get tongs. All right. Remember that guy? Uh, why don't you tell our listeners what, what that means. That's from Vegas Vacation. Right. You remember that? Yes. And uh, they're cooking. They don't have a grill. They're cooking right. on the rocks. Yes. Very hot. Randy Quaid. You yes. got that goof. You got that right. goof around you. He's looking over your shoulder every two minutes like you are. You're questioning. I like to do it this way. I like to do it that way. How do you get rid of this guy? What do you do? Uh-oh. Pour yourself a beer. <laughs> Is that really that taste? Good, but it, but it's not getting rid of the guy. What you want to do is you pour the beer. Either he takes the beer, if he doesn't. If right. he takes the beer, you pour him another one. Okay. If he takes the beer after that, you pour him another one. Before right. you know it, he's going to the bathroom every two minutes. He's out of your way. No, there's that. Uh, okay. there ah, is. little burp at the end. That's what Classy. you want. You want that guy out of your hair. You want that guy. So you get him drunk. Your, yes, get okay. him out of your hair, please. You got any suggestions? What are you doing with these characters? I don't have... I'm one of the characters, so that's... Uh, yeah. Now, let's that, say that, I want to get everybody get out of, of there. The barbecue's over. I'm out. I'm done. I, 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 I took the apron off. Have I you wanna... spoken to anyone, though, at the barbecue? You're I'm the barbecue the guy. Time. They talk to me. Everybody's got their two cents. But eh, let's be honest. They're talking to the wife in the kitchen for the most part. I'm outside with the dogs. This is what I'm doing. Give them those bones from that... Anything you have with the bones. What, what are we hearing? Yeah, we don't have any. Give him a little corn and a cob. That's oh, a, is it the dogs that's eating that? the dog eating the leftovers. Ah, you feed the okay. dog leftovers. Trust me, people will want to get out of that house. I'm getting a little sick. Is, is there some way we can get the dog, give the dogs a beer? We can get rid of them? <laughs> Listen to that guy. He's, he was loving it. How else do you get rid of people? Throw out, throw, you got to throw yourself. Throw. You got to throw yourself some kind of activity so that these people get the hint. It's over. Get out. Uh huh. And what would that activity be? Giving the dog some leftovers. Oh, that. Okay. I tell you, I can't think of anything else because no one wants to leave my house. That wife, she's good. She comes out with the cakes. She comes out with all this stuff afterwards. She's the bakery girl. I'll have her on the show another time. Trust oh, me, it's a lot okay. of fun. Yeah. Right. How do you feel now? I feel like I want to go to one of your barbecues. You do. I do. All right. Absolutely. Don't forget, we have a pool. You got to bring your own towel. Please don't let and think. That the homeowner's got to supply a towel for everybody that's coming over to swim in that pool. Bring your towel. Not you, insulting. Please. Not insulting for me to bring a towel. It's I, preferred. I would, Towels are really? preferred. Okay. Unless it says Great. the Mets on it. Other than that, you're allowed right. to have it. Bring over that towel. All right. Listen. As far as I'm concerned, I enjoyed myself. I had a nice time. I want to go ahead and watch another Yankee game. Sit back, have a beer, and enjoy my rest of my day. Thank you. Have a nice day. Everything old is new again. Thank you, barbecue guys. We'll be right back after this. I didn't realize we got another another minute here. That's a mistake on my behalf, a novice mistake. So, uh, you got any questions? You want to ask the Bobby? You guy, go ahead. I'm right here. I did. I had a lot of questions. I couldn't get a word you in. Got a you got You remind me of Doug in that way. I can never. All right. So, <laughs> what? Uh, as a guest, let me just recap. I I'm do still not, here. Wait for the question. I do not stay in the kitchen. Right. Correct. I go right to the backyard. Correct. I do not bother barbecue guy. Correct. Don't talk to him. Don't give him directions. Don't talk say I do Talk to me about like the this. ball game. Talk to me about whatever you like. Give me a beer. Wipe my brow. I'm going to be sweating like a pig. Make yeah. sure I'm not sweating on the food. Probably not going to do that. But I don't want to hear okay. about anything else. I just want to hear about how we were enjoying your day and having fun. And, uh, Thank you. Oh, here we go. Okay. I, uh, yeah, I had others, but fun. We'll be back next week when we're going to talk about food eating contests. Everything goes new again.